at least what I'm going to do is be the best VinQ guy out there. And so I sat for hours and just tried to figure out, tried to figure out how to break VinQ, to be honest, just, you know, that's, that's how I do things. And, uh, very pleasantly surprised, refreshing. Um, and again, the simplicity of it, um, you can't, uh, you can't beat, you don't have to have the eight other programs that match up with the other program to make it work properly. It should just work on its own. And I was, uh, pleasantly surprised and I still am every day. You're watching Q the Next Leader, presented by VinQ. I'm your host, Angela Rizzo. I'm joined today by Scott Wilkinson. He's the general sales manager at Tynan's VW and in Aurora, Colorado. Welcome, Scott. Hey, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Oh, it's so great. And we really appreciate your business and you being a VinQ customer. We really want to, you know, pick your brain today and Okay. And talk about what you're doing at your dealership and the things that are working. So how about I, I just just kick it off with a few questions? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Fair game. All right. So look, you know, there's a lot of dealers, both, you know, new and veteran dealers that listen to this podcast. Okay. So, you know, what's the most important piece of advice you would give Oof. them? Today? Well, every day is process. Have a process. Know what you're doing. And, and and stick with it and 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 have faith in it and go with it. Yeah. Awesome. I think that's really important because if you have a process, you can repeat it. Right? If it's not yeah. working, you can change it. That's right. You can yep, absolutely. You find your holes. You can either train on them or 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 make them better, change them. You have to know what you're looking for before you can change or do anything differently. Exactly. Well, tell me a little bit about yourself and about your dealership. Um, well, I've, I've, I've been in the business a long time. Um, I was, uh, I was born in the seventies and I've been in the business since I was 17. I started out as a lot of tenant in Salem, Oregon at a Dodge store. Um, I stayed there for quite a long time, around 15 years. I ended up leaving there, uh, went and ran a Ford store and outside of Portland, Oregon. And then, uh, did that for a few, well, five or six years and then ended up in Colorado. Um, and the, the market, and it's a blue state, which means closed on Sundays. So that was pretty intriguing. Um, so yeah, this is all I know. I'm, I'm a car guy. Uh, I'm always looking for the best way to do something and the easiest way to do something. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, well, you know, you've been in the car business for so long. Are there specific things that you've done uh, from an innovative perspective that, that you'd like to talk about or pass on to other dealers? You know, um, I'm not certain that there's any one thing that I've done that I would say this really, really works other than thinking about the time that we've been in business and the times that we're in. It's so changing. It's so volatile. And and quite frankly, it changes every other week almost at this point. Um, and we've realized I think pretty a lot of people have that the basics are what's important. All the foo foo, all the fun, all the stuff is people want real. People want they don't want the AI, you know, as, as mm -hmm. much as that's going to be coming a part of our future. They want real, trustworthy, um, and and really, if I could, I don't know uh, what 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 how what I do to make things work for myself and my salespeople here is make things as simple as simple as possible. Um, I truly believe there's two reasons why somebody doesn't do something. It's either they don't know how or they simply don't care. And we're going to make darn sure they know how so that the other part's really easy to figure out. And then we can make changes at that point. So that keep it simple, keep it really, really simple and, and have faith in it and just keep going. And that's, that's yeah. my, that's my motto. I love it. I love it. That, that's, that's great advice. Um, are there some key things that you do that keeps it simple for your customers not just your employees, but for people who are coming in looking for a car? Yeah, yeah. Very, very transparent, open door. Um, you know, I'm usually playing music at the desk, having fun. You know, uh, I want, we want everybody to feel like they've walked into their living room whenever they walk in here. And I tell my salespeople, the, you, you could know the cars better than anybody. You can know the programs. You can, you can know everything about the car business. If you're not able to make a friend, you're not going to succeed. And so that's where we start. We start with with making a friend, find out what in the world people are trying to accomplish, 
and 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 we try to attack it from there you know the money will come the cardios will come if you just do what's right so, yeah. do you find that the uh, do you have a different approach for new versus pre-owned can you talk a little bit about kind of the mix there we do we 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 we, we try our best uh we are new heavy here we want to sell more car more used cars for sure and that's a process that we're tackling you know it's a it's an no matter what, we're going to want to sell more, you know, the, the next day. So it's, it's for us, it's a 60, 40 split. We're selling 60% new to 40% used. And our process is pretty much the same. Um, you know, unless we get into the, the one-off cars that, you know, the super low mile car or something that's just a little bit different. If it's a certified vehicle, a pre-owned vehicle, uh, they stand on their own and, and, and it's its own market. And so you have to be able to, follow the process and make a friend and sell them a car. So the process pretty much stays the same. Um, we, we, we try our best to, to keep the pricing a, aggressive in the market. We're not really after to be number one. We certainly don't want to be last. Just, you know, be somewhere in the middle and, and give a customer a reason to, to click on you, you know? And so, and then once they do, what's that experience like? And that's where the fun begins. Uh, what's your process to acquire cars? Do you, you, you know, you, you focus on the service drive, you focus on private party auctions. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that process. Yeah. So Volkswagen, we are Volkswagen and Volkswagen for many years has been very, very least dominant. Uh, uh, so we have a huge database of, of you know, off lease vehicles um, where a consumer will just, <clears throat> excuse me, just hand it back in, turn it in and or trade it in for a new newer model. Um, out of our service drive, we, 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 we have quite a few appointments every day. We're talking, we're being friendly. Um, and th the days of the auction are, are, are there. They're not gone. It's just the last place you want to be, at least in my opinion. If you can take the vehicle and trade, if we can acquire it off lease or really with, you know, the system within VinQ, um, which is, you know, the, the, the buying program, call, make a friend, see if you can buy their vehicle. It doesn't hurt to try. So as far as a strategy goes, right now we've 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 toned down quite a bit to make sure that we're not you know so um, you know in trouble if the market changes so drastically in the future. And so we've done a pretty good job with that, I believe. Uh, you know, could always do better. But as far as our strategy, it is to work with what we have, make sure that we keep as many trades as we possibly can acquire as many as we can out of the service drive or off the street. And then we start, you know, hand picking out, out and about in the marketplace. Um, again, auction, last place we want to go. We will, we sell a lot of vehicles at the auction. As far as acquiring them, it's, it's, it, it just needs to be off the street through the programs that we have, especially VenQ. Uh, how, how many cars do you acquire uh, on a monthly basis uh, off the street? Off the street, well, not as many as we'd like. Uh, we're we're still under twenty. It's it's a rough market out there. Uh, I'm thinking we should, when we hit our stride, be in the forty to fifty mark. Um, take thirty to forty in trade. We have a good 120, 130, and sell 100, 100 to one hundred and ten a month to keep that turn going. That's the goals here. Yeah. Scott, would you say that that private party acquisition is one of your biggest challenges right now, or are there other yeah. challenges that you're facing in the dealership? Well, acquiring the vehicle, acquiring the right vehicle. There's a lot of vehicles you can buy. <laughs> There's a lot of vehicles you can acquire. It's playing that game, fitting it right into that box to where we can either get it financed for the customer, uh, passes our inspection for the shop. That's been a big one lately. It seems like every car you know, people are keeping these cars longer. That's the data that we're seeing. And what happens when a vehicle is older and they keep them longer, they have more troubles with the current state of our economy. And let's be real, it's 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 not the best out there. People aren't spending five, six hundred dollars to get something fixed on their car. And sometimes it's easier to trade it in. So we have to be really careful knowing why did this customer trade in this 75,000 mile car they've had since brand new. There's always a problem there. So you just have to be smart. And, and that's what we try to do where, where we get, um, I suppose, where we get hung up is that, that simple fact of that vehicle needs $3,800 worth of work. And we assumed it needed 1500. Now we're out of the market. What do we do? It's easy to, 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 to wholesale cars today, it really is. I mean, not easy yet. 
you can find the money really quick, whether there's other programs out there, whatever the case may be. Yet that's not viable for a dealership that wants to stay open for a long time. We want to be able to retail them, not wholesale them. So right, exactly, because that's where the margin is, right? Yeah, and so really uh, taking in a car that hasn't had hail or a bunch of issues with the vehicle and. The sweet spot's a five-year-old vehicle with 65,000 miles, let's be honest, and and they're just not coming in trade right now. So uh, we're having to get creative. Yeah. Well, um, can you can you talk a little bit about when you do get these cars, what's your process to appraise them? So we we, we use BinQ for sure. And I the process here at our store, the Volkswagen store, is the salesperson has BinQ on their phone, their iPad, wherever they have it. They go out. They have a set of pictures that they need to take. They're the same way every single time. And then the accurate mileage, they'll input, you know, you know what the vehicle is, an SE or whatever that might be. And then and they'll save it and they come up for a, a proposal or if the customer wants to know what their trade is worth. Once we're going to appraise a trade, it's already in the system. What we do is we just go to appraisal, uh, recent appraisals. We find the vehicle, open it up. Um, and with the parameters that are set within VinQ, it's 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 really 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 simple. Uh, anybody can do it, and and we you know we have the targets in there for what our average recon is, what our gross profit we want to make, all of that set, and then we plug in a number. You know whether it's ninety five percent of market, a hundred percent, whatever that might be, we're going to try to target that. Um, and then that, that's our ACV for the vehicle. Again, it, it, you know, you have to do your due diligence, check your miles, you know, are they lining up with what's for sale out there in the market? And that's the, one of the, my favorite options with VinQ is the ability to tweak the system a little bit. <clears throat> you know, maybe you have a, a, a 2016 with, you know, 55,000 miles, yet the average miles are 89,000 miles. We can actually go back a year or above a year and really try to find that market where a 50,000 mile vehicle and or the opposite. It's a it's a lot more miles. We've been seeing that a lot, too, because of Uber driving, all the food delivery services. So these three or four year old or two year old vehicles are coming in with an obscene amount of miles. How do you appraise that whenever everything is 20,000 miles and yours is 100, you know? And so with the ability to tweak it over, you know, in the program to the left, to be able to pick a different year, a year before, a year newer, um, more miles, less miles, and it's really, really fluid and simple, you can find a value quite quite easily. And um, again, with the way that I want our showroom run is the simplicity part. And I want my salespeople doing as much as they possibly can because, well, if they're not growing, then I'm not doing my job. And so it's really with the program, the way that VinQ is set up and the way you can set up all your parameters, anybody can determine what a vehicle's value is, to be honest. It's really, really that simple. And, that, and that's really cool. And do you, you allow that in your dealership that, you know, the sales, all the, like they don't have to come to one person to appraise Correct. it? Every, that, well, um, you know, there's a couple of backstops, you know, if it's a, mm -hmm. You know, if it's a regular, you know, 2019 Jetta with 64,000, anybody can, you know, yeah, they can determine a value. If it's a, you know, 2023 Mercedes GL something, you know, that, that that's coming in at $67,000, yes, we're going to get other people involved. You don't want to be in that boat alone ever. <laughs> so, but again, uh, I, um, to the, your, for your answer, as far as what the salespeople are able to do, yes, I put it on autopilot and... We're there for a backstop. We're there to make sure that, you know, things aren't being done wrong. We have a lot of trust and faith in our people. And it makes it, it makes our jobs a heck of a lot easier whenever they can get through 90% of it. And then we're just checking boxes. Yep, 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 yep. So really, yeah. And and VinQ makes it that simple for them to be able to do that, um, to be streamlined, simple. And that way, you know, for the consumer of them as well, let's be honest, they can go out and, get plug into a, a computer in 30 seconds if they have the VIN number in their miles they can get a value of their car within 30 seconds online so why is it that at a dealership it's going to take 45 minutes like it just doesn't make sense and so i mean it should we want to we want to do our due diligence yet 
we have to understand what the customers are thinking as well. Why can Stone's ABC whatever give me a value in 30 seconds online and it's going to take 45 minutes at the store? So we streamline it. We let the salespeople do it all. We're not, I'm not, the salesperson would not determine what the ACV is. They would get it all the way there to where it's really, really simple for us to figure out is what I'm saying. So, and they can give roundabout numbers as well. I have guys that are doing the uh, digital marketing tool, uh, DR, to where they're quoting people nonstop all day. And, you know, I made it really simple to where you can get a value on a trade as long as the windshield's good, tires are good, brakes are good. You're going to have a pretty darn good value. And I I, I give them, you know, 1500 bucks to $2,000 of leeway um, so that they're not wrong on values. That way we can get the quotes out to the customers as soon as possible, which quite frankly is probably the number one tool right now to be able to sell cars is to communicate with that customer and give them the data that they want accurately as quick as possible, which is why VinQ is so important today. Because quite frankly, if you do a few things right, you're going to get the accurate data. Is there anything else about your dealership in particular that you'd like to talk about? Um, well, we, we are unique. We, 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 we're family owned and operated. We've been around for 60 plus years. Um, we are on the same parking lot as a Nissan store, our own, our Nissan store, the same owners. Um, we have our used car, we call it the Tynan's pre-owned super center, which is a mile and a half down the road, same road. And that's where all of our recon happens, all of our photo photography. Um, and we'll sell our off brands down there bring our certified pre-owns to the main stores. Um, so with that and being around for so long and the owner body that we have, um, the real people, they've been in the business, their children are here working in the stores. Um, and that's trying to bring a family aspect to the showroom floor. It, it, we get a, a, a leg up when it comes to that because we are family owner operated. We will do what's right. And you can't beat that today. You can't beat that right now. And, and and they care about you. They know who you are. We're not just an employee number, you know. So I've been here going on 10 years. Um, and and if, if if all goes well, you know, I would like to retire uh, from, from this place, you know, because uh, that's how well I like it. So, um, yeah, I could talk all day about our, our owner body. They do a great job and, and, and they've been around forever and ever and ever. And they just want to do what's right. And once we do that, everything will be okay. <laughs> it's true, you know, and as a consumer, you sense it. You, yes. you sense it, right? When you walk into a dealership, and there's a there's a good vibe and a and a and a, and a great atmosphere. Yes. Smiling on the phone while we're talking on the phone is key. All of that, you know. If, if one of our teammates is down, let's lift them up, you know, because uh, we none of us will be successful if, if 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 it's going the other way. And it's it's let's just be honest, you know. Um, it's easy to get you know, down in the dumps today. If you just turn on the TV, walk outside, you name it, there's something wrong. Um, so we try to keep it, you know, uh, lively. And I call it, we, we have a bubble of protection around us is what I call it. And if we continue to do what's right, that bubble will stay there. So uh, we all believe in it and, and we pay the car gods as often as we can. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. You know, you're kind of, uh, you're kind of getting into the next series of questions that I wanted to ask. When you think about, you know, uh, people who are joined, in, you know, into automotive, you think about what are the what are the um, what are the most important personality traits that people need to have in your store, or that you really want to uh, grow in your store? Yeah, yeah, resilient, resilient. Um, you know, having having, you know, some sort of drive uh do what's right have have a backbone be strong be be smart um and really I, as anybody comes through to interview for a sales position let's say you know we've all done it in this business where we thought oh that person's going to do great and then they don't or nope that person's not going to do so well and they go to the dealership down the road and they're number one in three months you know oh my goodness this business, you can't judge a book by its cover. You have to, you have to try, and you have to give it your best. And and some people have it, and some people don't. What I'm after for the most is, um, you know, I don't know how to say. Let's say, uh, having a heart. You know, ha being real. Um, you know, I don't need a slick talking salesperson that's been doing it for 37 years, and and you know all that fun stuff. I need somebody that can make a friend and they don't have to know the car business. They don't have to know what, you know, 
uh, how much a, a, a Tiguan can tow or what the cubic inches of the, you know, chunk is. We can learn all of that. You have to be a good person and do what's right and and to, to move forward. You know, you don't have to really even be a computer savvy because we can teach that. But if you do what's right, and you have a good moral compass, then then everything else will fall right into line. So, yeah, I'm after just good people, you know, and that's really hard to find today. Well, yeah. there's a lot of good people out there. It's just, you know, they're not all coming into the dealership to want to work, I suppose. <laughs> right, exactly. It's it's ooh, how many of them really want to work? Because it's, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah, after- the, it's not for the it's not for the for the meek, and uh, you know, and the people. You you really have to have some tough skin to work in a dealership, don't you? Yes. Yeah. I mean, well, let's be real. You know, the customers, they obviously think that we're going to lie. So what do they do? They lie. Um, and that's where the I keep talking about our process in the very beginning of conversation with the people. They have to know immediately that we're, we're going to stand apart. We're going to be different than the rest because then all of that falls away, you know, um, but you will get that customer and and. We've, you know, I've sold cars plenty, plenty, plenty times. And I know what it feels like to be, oh, they're going to come back at three o'clock and buy that. Or, you know, that how that goes. And it's the 28th of the month and you're, you know, one car away from a bonus. And then they never, ever show back up again. You know, that can ruin somebody really, really quick. So we just work off of, you know, uh, just be truthful, be honest and everything will, everything will work out. So, yeah. Those are great. Those are great words to live by, you know, <laughs> honesty and truth. Yeah, um, that's, that's all we've got. Yeah. So uh, do you have a professional mentor? Is there somebody that you really look up to? And, and can you tell me why? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, yes, I, I, when I was coming up uh, at the original Dodge store, there was a gentleman, his name was Rex. He was a, my finance director, uh, more like a father, really. Um his brother worked with us. His name was Red. And as far as, you know, he he learned me a, a lot. Back when I was in finance the first time, we had credit apps that were handwritten and we had to fax them to the banks. And so we had to learn who a customer was by a credit app within 30 seconds. And what he you know, and, and that's where the foundation of there's only one way to do this in finance and that's the right way came from. And if we don't have time to do it right the first time, we'll never have time to do it a second time. And so that foundational piece for him and then just a lot of, you know, little word tracks here and there as far as what gross means and, and how to get it you know, what does it mean when you make a bunch of gross? What does it mean when you don't make a bunch and you lose a bunch? It doesn't matter. The car deal stands on its own and you have to look at those people individually and just keep moving forward. There's one. And then probably the most recent is a gentleman, his name is Scott Inukai. I don't know if you'll ever hear this, but he, he's the, I believe he's still the, yeah, he's the owner operator of, of some big stores out of Portland. And you know, as far as an operator is concerned, that guy, we went through cash for clunkers together and we had to pinch every at a Ford store and Chrysler Jeep Dodge franchises. And they were all falling left and right. And um, learning what I learned from him was paramount in this business. I mean, we wanted to increase a percentage in, 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 in profitability at the store. It started with the parts department and a washer that they're selling. And if they were selling it, for 23 cents, sell it for 40 cents. I mean, every penny was accounted for and every metric was accounted for. And we we followed the matrix. We followed the data to find our holes. And, you know, there's a lot of dealerships and a lot of franchises out there that say that they do that and they just don't. This guy, it was wild. And I learned, I, I would love to be able to, to be an operator like him one day. It was stri- straight to the point. It was the business. There's one way to do it. And it's the right way, and and every dollar counts, and it adds up, and it'll multiply um, once you start applying it the right way. And so, that's why I, I yeah I would say Rex and Scott. Sorry, <laughs> long winded again. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's really great. I, I kind of love just to let you go and and, <laughs> and say what's on your mind. I think that's where we get some of our best nuggets. Uh, yeah, is to just not interrupt and let your stream of consciousness go. 
Yeah. So it's all good. Um, is there a lesson that your job has taught you that you think everyone should learn in their life? Wow. Yeah, yes, 100%. Um, and it'll circle all the way back around it's to, to, just to be kind. Be kind to, doesn't matter if it's an employee or a customer or just somebody walking down the street, somebody walking in to give a glass of water. I mean, just be kind. We've been plagued in this business with, you know, uh, I've got to sound like this and I've got to say that. No, I told this customer that or I told this salesperson that I'm a cool guy, right? No, no. It, it, and it, it took me a long time to figure that out. I'm, I'm, I've been known to be a little bit of a hard ass. I've been known to, to, to be a stickler, you know, when it comes to my processes and, you know, a lot of garbage coming out of this mouth that I wish I could take back over the years. Um, and today, uh, again, the lesson I would learn is to be kind and no matter what, um, whether it's the customer or your, your employee, they're trying, they're trying the only way they know how. And if they're making mistakes, it's not because they're choosing to make mistakes. They're, they don't know what else to do because, well, we've been in the, I've been in the business for 30 plus years and it's second nature to me. It's not second nature to my 23 year old guy that's been in the sales department for one year or six months or two months. So just be kind and loving. And um, that will get you much further in this business than you could ever imagine. And it's the opposite of what everybody thinks. So yeah, be kind, just damn it. Be kind. <laughs> I love it. I love you know. it. And he kind of dovetails into my next question around, uh, what's the one thing about your job or what you do at the dealership that um, almost no one agrees with you uh, oh. about? So is that is that the kindness piece or is there something else? Um. Oh boy. Well, there's a whole lot of things that a lot of people don't agree with me with. Uh, they're learning though. <laughs> I would say, um, you know, because... I have a boss, he's a general manager, and he has his bosses, which are the owners. Um, I I live by, well, let me see if I can phrase this right. If I have to start calling customers or taking turns on the showroom floor, then there's a bigger problem than that one, that one set of customers. If my staff, if my salespeople can't do it right, or not to do it right, if they can't communicate and then communicate it back to me properly, there's a bigger problem. And so, you know, there's that delicate balance of, you know, sales managers need to call all customers and take turns. Like what? Let's, we can all say, yes, we're going to do that, but none of them are going to do it. Let's just be real. And because there's too much to do. And quite frankly, you should be spending your time training your staff how to do it. So you don't have to, I do hundred percent believe that my employees around me have to be better than me so that then I can stand taller. Whereas there's a lot of people in our business that push people down to make themselves taller. I go the other way. I would rather have the, the, the all time best. I don't know anything next to me. Cause it's only going to make me shine brighter. Um, and if they take my job, okay, that means I've retired. I don't know. I don't know, you know, but yeah, I think that right there is just the, you know, there's, there's, what is it? three or four ways a consumer can contact us. It's a telephone, a text message, an internet, or walk-in. Walk-in can be serviced or walking in physically, right? So there's like four things you have to train on and do good at, and that's it, only four. And if you can't figure that out, then you're doing something else wrong. So yeah, that, we won't agree on that at all ever because they're always going to yell at me to you know go talk to more customers. I'm like, well, if my people can't do it, then I'm going to get rid of them all. You know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, we have some fun conversations about that. <laughs> love it. I love it. All right. I'm really going to shift on you now with this next All question. Right. Okay. okay. So if you won $10 million tomorrow, what would you, what would you do with it? Do I have to pay taxes on it? <laughs> no. Can we check in here for service? Oh, no. Right back to the left. Okay. Uh, keep going to the left. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. $10 million, what would I do with it, you know? Uh, I have four children. Uh, I would for sure make sure they're all set up properly. Um, and, I, you know, 
Golly. If you would ask me this question 10 years ago, my answer would have been quick and easy. Today, it's a little different, uh, especially what we've all gone through in the last few years. You know, I, again, I'm going to circle back down. And I would do what's right with it. I would try my best to make everything around me better, um, whether it's my home, my work life, my children, my 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 close you know people that I'm around all the time. Um, you know, because it goes fast. You, you know, you can get it fast and it goes fast. It, it doesn't really change um, my day to day operations. Would I take some time off? Probably. Would I still work? Probably. What else would I do? I would love to go travel, but let's be real. I probably wouldn't. Um, or I would. I don't know. <laughs> I would make sure my children are set up and and everything around me is is set so where I would never have to worry about anything ever again. That's really to keep the stress levels down. That would be the most important thing for me. I love it. Do you feel like talking about your kids for a few minutes? You want to tell sure. me a little bit about your kids? I'd love to hear about them. <laughs> well, uh, my oldest is Morgan. She, I have three daughters and one son. Uh, I'll go into it really quick. I just did this at church the other day. I was for Father's Day. They they let me do the prayer list, and I was able to speak about what prayers do. And uh, when I was four years old, I had meningitis, spinal meningitis, meningeal Um, And I don't really remember much except for my grandma holding the Bible all the time next to the bed. That's the only thing I remember, which is pretty cool now. Um, I, uh, whenever you have that type of illness, you, your temp, you have a really high temperature for a long time. I was in the hospital for over three months and, um, I survived uh, a lot of a long story there. I survived. And then I was told later on in life that I wasn't going to be able to have children because, um, of what it did to me as a child. And so, okay. Uh, what, what can I do about that? Right. Uh, I, uh, found, um, uh, M Michelle, my, my late wife. Um, and we, uh, we we're the Dodge door. I was a lot of tenant at, um, they, they talked me into getting married. They didn't talk to me and they actually paid for the wedding, believe it or not. As a lot of tenant, there's a longer story there, but it's really, really neat. Um, anyways, we got married and three months later, now she knew I couldn't have children. We had our nieces and nephews and dogs and cats. She got pregnant with Morgan and, that was a weird conversation because, well, what, what was I supposed to think? And sure enough, she's mine. Of course she is. And we had three more, um, which are absolute blessings of, from God. Uh, you can't change my mind on any of that. And my oldest now is uh, 26 years old. She's Morgan. And I have Chloe, Chloe Noel. Um, she is a couple of years younger, so 24. I'm going to get these ages wrong. They're going to kill me if they ever see this. Um, and then I have Lily, our youngest daughter. Um, when we had Morgan and Chloe, they were running around having fun. We had Lily, she was around nine months old and she was trying to get into the dollies of her sisters and they're like, get away little kid. And so we're like, well, let's give her a friend. And, uh, sure. I figured for sure it would be a girl. I wasn't trying to have a boy and it was, he was a boy. And so everything in the house was pink and purple and, and, and we had Cole and him and Lily became little friends and now they're all great friends. And uh, we ended up, we, we did lose their mom, my, my, my late wife and uh, 21 cancer, cancer sucks. Um, although, um, you know, life is good. Life is good. They're, the kids are doing great. My son actually works with me here. He's a lot of tenant. <laughs> Um, doing a wonderful job. Uh, he, he'll be doing some great things. I'm not too sure I want him in the sales side of things, uh, but he will, he'll go wherever he's going to go. He's, he's, he loves fishing. Um, I mean, things could be a lot worse, you know, uh, I worry about if, if he's getting home from the mountain on, you know, uh, on time versus the clubs or the, the bars or anything like that. And my daughters are all doing very well. They have careers and um, they all have partners in life that they're all doing very, very well. So, you know, I'm very blessed in that arena and I can't ask for more. I can't ask for more. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it sounds, your children certainly are a blessing and, and uh, they really were four little miracles, weren't they? Oh, yes. A hundred million percent. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry to hear about your wife and, and, and uh, I know that must've been heartbreaking cancer is horrible and yes. uh, especially for someone that young. So my yeah. heart goes out to you. Yep. Yep. I'm, uh, 
gotten through it. Um, and, and yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm doing great. I cannot complain. Um, uh, I know you guys know Caitlin Breger and she'll, she'll love this tag out. Um, her and I are having a great time together. Oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> oh, so. I, I love it. Um, uh, you know, okay. So I'm going to fast forward. Let's think about, you know, I look, the automotive industry changes every day, right? Do you have yeah. any sense of what you think is going to look like in the next five years? Sense guesses. Um, I I do. I'm I I do. Uh, this I our market should level itself out. I I I can't. I mean, with the real data that you can look at, with bankruptcies as high as they are right now, with um, as many auto loans that are delinquent right now, these are numbers that haven't been seen since you know the 2002 era, which was, you know, everybody talks about 2011, everybody forgets about the 02 era when I went into finance for the first time in 2002 and interest rates were 10, 11% buy rates. And at that time, you know, for me, I was in finance. It didn't really, I didn't understand what, how big of a deal that was. And then when we came out of it is when I realized, oh my goodness, um, zero percents and all that stuff for 72 months started becoming really popular. So anyways, I think every data mark or every marker that we're seeing today is, is greater than it was in our past at any time. It's about to implode. And if we're not smart, if we don't have programs that, that are simple, basic and, and, and right to the point with real data, we won't survive, um, you know, without getting into the, the EV market world, that, that, that's a, it's a, it's always going to be around it. We're not going to be all EV and all of that. It's just not going to happen. Our, our society won't stand for it because we don't have the infrastructure for it. Let's just be honest. Um, so we have to get really good at knowing those things and understanding the current market with our ice cars, gasoline cars. What, what do we have? What don't we have? Beg our manufacturers to make us hybrids, not pure EV. That would have been really great. Um, Cause as you can see, especially in a VinQ program, what hybrids are doing right now, it's, it's an untapped market that is amazing and, and it should be. So in five years from now, I see it leveling out. I see a lot of clutter. Um, you know, going away, cream is going to rise to the top and there's going to be a lot of um, correcting, I think, over the next five years. And um, I just pray that we survive that correction because there is going to be a correction um, and we just have to be smart and, and get through it. So, yeah, that's my opinion. I love uh, it. It's we, very insightful. Very insightful. Yeah. All right. Uh, you know, this has been a great podcast. I want to let one last question and then I'll let you go. I know you're incredibly busy over there at the dealership. So is there anything that I didn't ask you that you wish that you wish I had asked you? Uh, I don't, I, I'm not, that's a great question. Um, you know, no, I think we covered it all at, the, I, I always say, you know, this business is really, really, really easy. It's us. It's right here that makes it hard. And if we as managers or really anybody in this business can set a platform, set a foundation of processes that are simple and easy, and I'm talking just four or five, you'll survive and you'll make it, and you'll do great things. We can't make it difficult anymore. We've done that. We've done that with the, and I don't know if I can say this or not, but for those out there in the business, the, the world of, you know, all these programs and all this stuff in it, and you can't even tell if it gives you a customer or not. It's, it it's, you need to merchandise your cars, right? Merchandise your people, right? Merchandise your processes, right? And everything else will fall into place. And that's, that's really if, if I could tell or say anything to anybody out there in the car business, we've got to keep it simple. We've, we've done the make it difficult thing and it didn't work. And it just did. You, you don't need to hire somebody out of MIT to figure out, you know, how many leads you got. Um, it should be a really simple program and you should be able to 
you know, have your salespeople give you a list every night and it should match what your internet says. And if it doesn't, you've got a problem and actually do something about it if it is and everything will be okay. <laughs> so yeah, keep it simple. Keep it simple. I love it. Scott, this was really a great, great time for me. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. Um, Absolutely. Thank you for being such a great customer and thanks yeah, for being such a great sport. Yes. I'll, I'll be real. Um, and this might make it, it might not, you know, whenever I was talking about the guy, Scott Inukai out there in Portland, I was a beta tester for, um, Viato when it very first started launching. I love the program. Why wouldn't I? It's all I ever used from that point moving forward. And that's 15 years now. Um, when our owner body and everybody introduced VinQ, I mean, thank goodness I was on the other side of the angry Scott because I was like, well, golly. And then I flew to Kansas City, things like that. And I thought to myself, okay, wait, if I could learn the auto, I could learn VinQ. At least what I'm going to do is be the best VinQ guy out there. And so I sat for hours and just tried to figure out, tried to figure out how to break VinQ, to be honest. Just, you know, that's that's how I do things. And uh, very pleasantly surprised, refreshing. Um, and again, the simplicity of it, um, you can't uh, you can't beat. You don't have to have the eight other programs that match up with the other program to make it work properly. It should just work on its own. And I was uh, pleasantly surprised, and I still am every day. I, 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 I sing your guys' tune. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people in this business and, and, and especially right now, dollars and cents are all that's going to matter here real soon. And so, yeah, uh, VinQ is, was a very, very pleasant surprise for me. And I, I appreciate that because I would have been your guys' worst critic, I promise. <laughs> and, 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 and I'm singing your praises because this, Yeah. It does all the same things, yet it doesn't. It gives us real data. It gives us what they're selling for, not what Mannheim might have done, you know, six months ago. Uh, it's live, it's real, and and it makes it, it just gives you that peace of mind to where you can make your car deal and not worry, oh my gosh, is my used car manager going to lose his mind over my value? So thank you for that. Because as much if take as much stress away from us as we possibly can and our lives become a whole bunch better. So that's one piece of it right there. Well, thank you so much. We uh, we really appreciate you. And we strive to not only make your life easier, but help you make as much money as you possibly can. So yeah. that's what we're all about here. We're all about focusing on the dealers. So again, I appreciate your time, Scott. It was really wonderful. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in September. If not, I might have to come see you the next time I'm out in Colorado. You got it. All right, Angela. Okay. Thank you. you.